Hi everyone, I'm Garden Girl Lisa Dickinson bringing you this week's capture video where we focus on documenting our everyday stories with pocket style scrapbooking. Today I'm going to show you how I incorporate a milestone event into my Project Life album and set it apart from the regular weekly documentation layouts. So sometimes in your Project Life albums you're wanting to include a milestone event that's going to require more space than just one or two pockets. This is my Project Life album, and in the interest of full disclosure, I should tell you it is not at all current, but let's overlook that. So this is the back side of my last layout, and I'm going to use this side to document one of my son's events this week, which was his swimming, his first ever individual medley. The previous week, I used this 4x6 pocket page, and it's a Design C from Project Life, or American Crafts makes a similar layout that's just six 4x6 photos. And I'm going to use this side for the left side of my spread. And one thing that I like to do for milestone layouts like these is to use a different size insert for one half of the spread. One that doesn't span the whole 12 inch width like this one which is a design J from Project Life. This size insert kind of sets it apart from the regular 12 by 12 pages and I used one the previous week for my husband's birthday, this 8.5 by 11, and then I have this smaller one that holds his cards. And I like these different size inserts just to break up the album and make certain important events stand out. So to make this easier to work with, I'm just going to pull this page out and then set my album aside so I can get started. So here's the basic layout that I'm planning to use. I have the Design C on the left, and then I'm using Design J on the right. It holds three 3x4 three cards in this row, and then three more 4x4 four four squares. So this layout's going to focus on my son's swim event, and I've started by printing an enlarged photo of him swimming that I plan to use to fill up these first three pockets. So when you turn to this page of the album, You'll immediately see this big photo and know that the layout's all about swimming and it's not the typical weekly spread. I've printed this photo as a 6 by 12 enlargement, but if you don't have a large format printer, you can just divide your photo into three 6 by 4 pieces and then print them separately. I'm eventually going to trim this enlargement down to fit the three pockets. So this big photo that spans the left edge is going to set the tone of the page. And the only other thing I know for sure that I want to include is this ribbon that he won at the event, as well as a significant amount of journaling that will tell about this milestone. Because my son likes to keep his actual ribbons displayed in his room, I've taken a photo of the ribbon that he won and I printed it four inches tall. And I'm going to include that on the spread instead of the real thing. So I've got this largely blue photo as well as the blue ribbon and using those to guide my selection I've gathered some products that will all coordinate with them. Obviously I've got lots of blue as well as some things in green and aqua and I'll be pulling supplies for the various pockets from this stash. I just like to lay the products out using my pockets as a guide and then rearrange them all to work together as a whole. The first, first thing I want to designate is a few pockets that will hold journaling. I've got this set of Studio Calico cards and several of them have colors that fit into my scheme. There's 4 by 6 and 3 by 4 This one has a number 1 die cut out of it and it might be appropriate since he won first place. I might pair that with this blue ribbon. And then there's this aqua one that's cut like a speech bubble. And this 4 by 6 would leave me a lot of room to include journaling, plus it has that aqua edge. And I think those three will work to hold any of my journaling that I want to include. Next I'm going to look for some pattern papers to mix in. I've grabbed this basic gray pad and it's the Capture Collection. You can see it has lots of blue and green designs. I'm going to pull out a few of each of these sheets and just see where they might fit in. Like I said earlier, I like to lay things out just on the top of each pocket and I'll keep rearranging the elements until the spread starts to look balanced and I found a home for everything on my page. This is also where I determine how many photos I can include and the spots that will hold my journaling and then the pockets that will just be fun and decorative.
I know that I want to include some dimensional elements, so I've got these two chipboard frames from the Crate Paper Style Board line. The blue one is almost 4x4, so it would work well in one of these square pockets. And then I'm thinking of incorporating this green one maybe on this side of the page. These frames would be a great place to include additional photos that I have. And I know I want more than just this big photo, but laying everything out like this helps me determine exactly what size and how many more photos I will need. I've also cut a few 3x4 frames on my silhouette, and these designs are from the two-piece digital store. I'd like to work a few of them in. I just need to keep rearranging things here to figure out where I can fit them in. I really like these darker blue ones because they tie in nicely with the blue water and the blue ribbon, and this darker shade of blue brings a nice bit of contrast with the green and aqua that I've already got going on. Then I've also cut one of the phrases designed by Vilna, and it says, I'm proud of you, and it will perfectly fit into this page. Thinking about putting it maybe right down there. All right, I've done a bit of rearranging off camera, and I think I've got things where I want them. I have two or three additional spots that I want to include photos, so I'm going to resize those digitally and then print them out so they'll be ready to go. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll be back to continue working on the design. Okay, you can see I've printed out some additional photos to include in the spread. And then I also went ahead and I wrote my journaling in pencil on two of these journaling cards. I just wanted to make sure that that was enough room to include everything I wanted to say and that I didn't need another pocket for journaling. So two ended up being enough, so I'm good there. And now I've got just about every pocket filled. And the ones that just have plain paper right now will be spots where I'll add in some embellishments and fun stuff. And since on my large photo there's a lot of white space in this water, I'd like to work in something there. Maybe using the lower part for the title and putting some additional embellishments in the center panel. When I originally pulled out supplies for this page, I grabbed a set of vellum die cuts from the Crepe Paper Boys Rule line because there are lots of shapes in the blues and greens of my color scheme. So I'm going to grab some of these now. I think that's all of them and just see what they would look like arranged in a few spots. These are really cool because obviously the vellum is slightly translucent, so they layer really well because they let anything that's underneath them kind of show through. So I'm just going to put a few of these down here on this scrap of paper, and then maybe mix a few in here on this journaling block so it's not such a big chunk of white. I think I want to put my title down here. And these thickers, which are also from the Crate Paper Boys Rule line, are an, an uppercase block alphabet. And I'm going to spell out the name of this race, which is the 100 meter medley. And I'm not going to line these up perfectly right now because I just want to see what they're going to look like first. And I guess that's the good thing about thickers not adhering super well is that you can rearrange them as you need and they don't stick down permanently. But I'll probably add some additional adhesive once I decide exactly where I want them to go. Okay, things are coming together now. I've written my journaling in pen on both of these cards and I erased the pencil marks. And I've still got a few blank spots on the page that need to be filled, so that's my next step. I have pulled out a sheet of paper from Crate's Boys Rule line, and it includes lots of various sized elements. So I cut a few of them out that went with my page theme. You can see those here. And I'm just going to use those to accent a few of these bare areas. Maybe put some of these little sentiments right here on the speech bubble. But I've still got this water photo that's really just white space, and it definitely needs something. 
So I'm thinking to help draw your eye into the page, I might use some more of the vellum arrows from the boys rule set. That's the set here. So I pulled out some of the blue and green ones. And I think I'm just going to arrange these on this photo. And that kind of just adds some interest to this space and it'll tie it into the arrows right down below. And once I have these arranged where I want them, I'll probably just use a tiny attacher to staple them to the photo. And that's an easy way to get them adhered. I still have nothing in the center of this frame. So I cut a piece of jelly bean paper that's a blue and green pattern just to pop behind it. And I will adhere that down in just a minute. Another spot that I want to add a piece of scrap paper is on the journaling card that has the die cut number one. Without a color behind it, it really doesn't show up at all. So I've got a little piece of aqua from the basic gray paper pad that will work there. I'm just going to grab my adhesive and stick it down on the back side of the card like that. And that really helps that number one pop out. I also wanted to include the date of this swim race. And in the set of the crate um, vellum die cuts, there are little strips that have all the months on them. So I grabbed the one from July. And then for the numbers, I've got these white mistable thickers from Studio Calico. And if you add ink or mist to them, there's a little design that shows up. I'm just going to use them as is because they're white and they work into my design. So next, I want to add in a few embellishments. I have a couple of the two-piece metal flare and they feature star designs on them and I think they'd be perfect like up here in this circle die cut and maybe right here in the center of the frame. Obviously if you have more photos than I do that you want to incorporate into a spread you could swap any of these pockets out for photos instead of just decorative elements. That's one of my favorite things about pocket scrapping is that it's really flexible for the amount of photos that you have. At this point, I'm ready to start sticking everything down and getting the cards ready to go in their pockets. I'm going to use my small stapler just to quickly adhere some of these things to the cards. This is definitely one of my most used tools and unlike regular adhesive, the staples sort of serve as an embellishment as well. They add a little accent of metal. So I'm gonna staple this vellum down here and then I'll go ahead and adhere everything else off camera. And I'm also going to add just a little bit of machine stitching to a few places. And then I'll be back to show you the final details. So here's a quick peek at some of the details up close. I use my stapler on the vellum die cuts since other adhesives tend to show through the vellum. I also added some stitched borders around this side and also around the date and then up here in this corner. So now everything is adhered down and it's ready to go in the pockets. So I will give you a look at the completed spread. Thanks so much for joining me for this week's capture video. You can find a complete list of supplies and details for this project on the 2P's website. And don't forget to check out all the fabulous videos and scrap supplies available at 2 